Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to this uh, uh, presentation. My name is uh, Wu Yi Wang from GIA. Uh, Sanghai, thank you very much for your introduction. And today I'd like to uh, take this chance to talk about the, some services and technologies uh, in GIA. As we all know, the, the technology keeps uh, improving and the same thing in GIA. I would like to talk something about this new developments in GIA and the services. It is really a pity I couldn't go to Korea this year and I really enjoyed uh, visiting you um, last year for, for the presentation. Um, but I think it's good that we have this technology so we can um, talk uh, online. So today I, I basically I want to cover two topics. Uh, first, I want to uh, talk about diamond verification. So we know uh, diamond or what a claim to be, and it may come with a, a GIA report or other, other labs report to claim to be that stone. I would say most of the case is correct, but uh, it's not always, always the case. It's uh, not necessarily match the stone with the report. So a verification process is required. I'll explain to you more why we need to do a verification. And then second, um, after that, I'm gonna talk about the evolution of the lab tree ground diamond grading in G at the GIA. As you may have heard, the recently GIA made announcement and a change of policy, uh, grading policy of lab grown diamonds. I'm gonna to explain to you what we're going to do and why we're doing that. So these are two topics. So first I will talk about uh, diamond uh, verification. So we know diamond, millions of diamond traded every year in, in, in our industry globally. Basically a diamond, most of diamond comes with a, a report and GI report is very important in the trade. The assumption is the diamond is exactly what the report says. I, again, I think most of it's probably right and it's an honest society, but there are a lot, I would say a lot of uh, um, exceptions. And the matching, the verification process for the diamond that matches what it claimed in the report is getting more and more important. Let me give you some examples. The diamond on the left of the screen actually is a HPHT laboratory grown diamond. We identified that in GI laboratory that is a lab grown diamond. It's 1.76 carat F color, VVS1, a lines diamond. And when we look at it, the stone actually taking the lab for update service and with the inscription on the girdle. So in the, the right-hand side, you can see that there's an inscription on the, on the diamond. And uh, the, this is a GI report number. When we check this report number, actually this report number was issued to a natural diamond with almost identical size, very close color, and the same clarity. So obviously, this report number is intentionally added to this lab-grown diamond. It's a kind of, a, it's a counterfeit diamond tried to sell a lab-grown diamond as a natural diamond. So this is obviously a very dishonest behavior. So that's just, one of the examples for using HPH lab grown diamond to, I would say, substitute a natural diamond in the market. Well, now if I show you the second example, the diamond on the left hand side is a CVD lab grown diamond. Now it's not HPHT lab to grown, it is a CVD lab grown diamond. It's about a 1.03 carat F color. Same story, it come to the lab, GI lab for update service. It also has inscription. The inscription now in the kind of the right hand side of the picture is a very close to what a GI's inscription look like. The previous inscription doesn't even didn't look like a right one, but this one look uh, kind of uh, really close to what it's supposed to be. It's not identical, they didn't do good enough. Not identical, but much closer to real GI inscription. When we look at this report number, it is a, a natural diamond report number with a very close size 1.23 carat F color. It's 
very well matched. So now we understand it. What happened is uh, somebody is using a CVD lab grown diamond to substitute a natural diamond in the trade and with a pretty high quality laser inscription to match GIS laser inscription. So that's CVD diamond. Both are lab grown. But it's not always the case to use lab grown diamond to uh, substitute a natural diamond. Here, what do we find very recently actually in GI Talk Lab? It is a HPHT treated natural diamond. Now, I just want to make it clear this is a natural diamond, but it was HPHT treated to improve its color. It's pretty big 5.4 carat D color. So we identified it as HPHT processed natural diamond. It also has a GI report number inscribed, as you can see here in the right hand. Well, this time the inscription is not so good compared with the previous one. Um, but a report number, if we check it again, it is a natural diamond report. Matched very well, 5.4 carat, and it's D color. It's very interesting to do for this one, they not only use a natural diamond, try a treated natural diamond, try to substitute another natural diamond. What happened is uh, this is a type 2A diamond, try to match another natural type to a diamond. So they really did pretty good homework, try to make a, a trick. Well, this is not necessarily the worst. So now we see in the trade is there are HPHT Navigrown diamond, CVD Navigrown diamond, and even HPHT treated natural diamond to substitute real natural diamond. That's not the worst. The worst situation, if you look at this, it is moissanite. Most this stone was tested in South Africa. No, what happened is the, 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 the famous country for natural diamond is a moissanite, 1.02 carat colorless with the inscription of a natural diamond report on it. Good match, One point, the natural diamond is 1.02, the E color. So now somebody even tried to use a moissanite to like a counterfeit diamond that was a natural diamond report number on it. So what I'm talking over talk, talking here is probably just a, a tip of the iceberg of the real situation in the industry. There could be quite a lot of this kind of uh, dishonest behavior in our trade. So how do we protect the consumer's interest to avoid this from happening? So we really need to have a, a verification process. So how do we confirm a diamond? Either it's a loose diamond or it is a mounted diamond as a claim to be. So we need to think about how to do that. So the way in principle is, okay, how about it? You know, the easiest way is to submit a stone back to GIA to check again. That's probably the, the most straightforward method but it's not always, not always possible to do that. So another option is what if, how about a GI to supply some information to share with the industry that unique information of a specific diamond. If we share that information through you know, this uh, website or whatever, where we share information of this stone, and then the same information, and that can be collected by the customer they don't have stone, doesn't have to come back to GI by its customer and to compare and for verification if these two set of data, they match or not. If they match the same stone, if it, that doesn't match, that means it is a kind of counterfeit is a <coughs> replacement or substitution or diamond. So it's just basically in principle. So that basically means we need to have some device for the external applications to collect the data, right? It device could be very complicated, could be very simple, could be as simple as a loop, uh, could be really complicated, but it could be a microscope. But there are some basic requirement for this device for the external use, for consumer to use. So first, the technology need to be quick and easy. Uh, device need to be easy to, uh, to operate. We don't want device to be too complicated. And the result, the conclusion need to be accurate and uh, no uh, 
uncertainties need to be very clear conclusion. It is best the device is small so it's portable can carry around. And the device doesn't have a lot of requirement or the environment is a minimum requirement, for example, the temperature, humidity, and the cleanliness. So very little uh, requirement for the environment. And also a minimum requirement of stone itself, so such as the cleanliness. We don't want the, you know, the need of stone to be super clean. That's not always possible to, to, to do um, with the client. And it's best to that device can work for both loose and the mounted diamond because it's very important not only to confirm a loose diamond and also important to confirm the mounted diamond on a piece of jewelry. And the best to cover a wide range of size and a cut. And the most important is I think it's uh, the cost need to be known. And the cost need to be known for GIA because GIA need to share some unique data for the client to use. And the cost need to be known for the client. Otherwise, it will not be possible to implement. So with all of this uh, consideration and the consideration, and we think we will try to take advantage of a GI less inscription. So GI less inscription could be a good uh, piece of information to, to be used for diamond verification purposes. So I'm going to explain to you more what we're going to do, why it's going to work. So most diamond graded in GIA, <coughs> that inscribed as a report number. So it's, the, I would say, I would say most, not 100%, probably 95%, 98% of diamond have less inscription on the girdle already. It is a very easy to expand this to this service to 100% of all gem diamonds. The interesting thing, the advantage of technology is uh, the, ins the image of the inscription are taken automatically. Immediately after the inscription, we can take an image without any additional device, without any additional manpower, the image will be captured and saved. So it's a very easy process. I would say very low cost for GIA, because there's no additional cost for GIA. Of course, we need some space to save uh, millions of uh, images, of course. Now, if we look at this uh, picture, that's a piece of uh, laser inscription on a diamond is a, a girdle image with a GIA plus a 10 digit, 10 digit number of report number. I want to explain this picture very carefully is uh, this image has a fingerprint information of the diamond. First of all, I want to say, first it's very difficult for a client to make an identical GIA inscription in font in size. It's very difficult, but let's say they can do it. But what they cannot do is to duplicate the relationship between the lace inscription, these numbers, the letters in Scrum Diamond, and the, and the features of the diamond girdle. For example, where is the facet junctions are on the on this girdle, it is impossible to duplicate this relation, including where the inscription is, and what's the relationship with the with a girdle outline and with the facet junctions on the girdle, it is impossible to duplicate this relation. So this image has unique, I try to emphasize, it is unique information of a diamond. It can be used as a fingerprint of diamond. The reason is the facet on the girdle, on the diamond girdle is created, a small facet is created randomly. So that's make it a, a unique feature uh, happened. So with that <coughs> explained, this is a unique feature. Would we use, we'll be able to use it as a fingerprint and this image, you know, we can share this image with uh, basically the fingerprint of the diamond with the client, with the public. It is pretty easy to share this image. For example, we probably can use different ways to share the image, but a, a simple way, for example, is a GI report check. Many people come to, uh, come to GIA website to do the report check. And what if we just put this image in the report check, then you get the fingerprint of the diamond. Now, what happens is we can supply a small device like this. It's just an example small device for the client to collect the image at the client end. So it's a very small device like this. It is uh, very small. It's just like uh, you know, 19 centimeters in the longest dimension. It's less than 1.5 kilograms. 
the cost is very, very reasonable for this type of device, but it can capture very high resolution, very clear image of the latest inscription on loose diamond. Here's a loose diamond. It can also capture the image on a, a mounted diamond, a piece of jewelry. And then above all, in addition, we can also use a Wi-Fi to transfer the image to a cell phone. Then that creates a lot of opportunities. When the image is on a cell phone, we can do a lot. So anyway, now we have two images of this diamond. One is collected in GIA and shared by GIA. Or the image is collected by client. So now what we can do, let's just compare these two images. These two images have all features matched. That means this is the same diamond. This is two are the same diamond. But if they are different, even they are similar in some way, but if we find something different, that means this is a very possible, highly possible is a counterfeit, is a, a fake diamond. So that's basically principles for this diamond verification per, um, process and how do we launch it? How do we need to supply this service? I think GI probably is going to do it with two phases. The first phase, we're just going to share the image with the client for the client to do visual matching. That can be done, uh, could, could be implemented in the early 2021. That's the first phase. And the second phase, GI will launch was what <clears throat> offer an automatic matching service. When client load an image to let's say an apps, well, that app will tell you automatically match with GIS database to tell you that's a, a real one or is a fake one. Um, we're, we're still in the development phase for that. And I hope hopefully that could be done at the middle of next year, 2021. So with that, I basically explained to you the, what a GI is working on. It's a verification, a diamond verification service. And uh, hope, hopefully this will be a very useful, easy, useful um, the service and a support to, to the industry and to protect the interest of uh, our consumers and the consumers and our clients. So with that, I covered the first topic of uh, today's presentation. Now I'm going to move to the second one about a GIS recent announcement that we changed our policy of a lab grown diamond grading. Uh, very recently, actually, is August 11th, GI announced. So we are going to use the standard specific 4C terms to grade lab-grown diamonds instead of uh, using the kind of uh, a descriptive terms and a grade range. Um, we know there are a lot of uh, one or more lab-grown diamonds in the trade, and um, it is a, a new opportunity a new option, and particularly for young people in the Western, in the Europe, in the United States. As what our CEO and the President GIA CEO and President Susan Jack said, they, they too they deserve our protection. And this stone should also be ingraded. And so they know what they are purchasing, what quantity they are. So they also de uh, deserve our protection. So I'm going to explain to you what GI is going to do and also why we are uh, doing that. Before that, I just want to mention a little bit. I want to use this slides to show you what a big scale globally that we are doing the diamond growth for German purposes. So 10 years ago when I talked in, in Sora as well about a synthetic diamond at that time, you were wondering, yeah, it, it is uh, still in the experimental phase and no worry about that. There's nothing actually in the market or nothing significant in the market. But now today, that's not the case. Everywhere, basically every gem show, we will see lab grown diamonds. I think many, many shops, many, many <laughs> dealers, they are carrying lab grown diamonds. So it's become a real product for jewelry industry and to support as a product to grade this diamond is quite important for the consumers. To explain why GIA changed the grading terms policy for lab grown diamonds, let me just review with you the history of diamond growth. Then you will understand why we are changing. Diamond is extremely important material, is a strategically important product 
for industry because of the very special physical and uh, chemical properties. And the natural diamond total amount is limited to, so to grow diamond in the laboratory is extremely important thing. So this type of uh, effort development started in 1952 and uh, soon after the second world war. So the first diamond actually produced by the CVD technology in 1952 and in 1953, a Swedish company and the SEA, they started growing HPHT, synthetic diamond. I would use the term synthetic diamond uh, in 1953. Now in 1954, the very important milestone is that a GE company in the United States reported they can create a small grid grade HPHT diamond and using the sum of great in the technology. That's a very famous thing, the, a big milestone in diamond growth. And then in 1970, GE produced the first experimental gem quality HPH diamond. It's a very important thing, please remember. It is 1970. It took about 20 years to produce the first experimental gem quality diamond. Before that, it is Basically, there's no gem quantity in lab grown um, diamond. Well, it, takes, it took a, about another 20 years until 1990s. Russian firms produced the first HPHD lab grown diamond for commercial purposes. So that's 1990s. And same time, the company, nice, uh, American company like GE and De Beers company and the Sumitomo in Japan, they started the experimental product, colorless or near colorless HPHT in lab grown diamonds as a picture show here. Most of them show yellow orange color, but experimentally they can produce a high quantity colorless, near colorless HPHT grown diamonds. And that's 1990s. They're actually not much lab grown diamonds for commercial purposes for the jewelry industry until 2002, the Genesis company was, was uh, set up in United States. This company used a Russian technology in the 1990s, Russian started uh, producing HPHD diamond for commercial purpose. This company used a Russian technology. They basically grow yellow orange diamond, but the production stopped just a few years later. It didn't, uh, didn't grow, didn't go very well for many reasons. That's 2002. That's almost 50 years after the first diamond was produced in the, in the lab tree. Well, in 2014, it's a big step, a very well-known diamond company called New Diamond Technology, NDT, a company in Russia, in St. Petersburg, that produced a very high quality lab grown diamonds using HPHT technology over five carat in 2014. So this is a very high quality diamond and it took a very quickly revised and kind of updated the own record in 2015. It's a 10 carat, it's an E-color VS, top quantity is a 10 carat. Well, don't forget about the CVD technology. The first German quality CVD diamond was produced actually in 2003, but in that time, the quantity was not very good. In 2016, as you see here, now the CVD diamond could reach about five carat in size, colorless, near colorless, or slightly colored. And at the same time, the HP technology can produce diamond as big as a 15 carat after faceting. A very important step in diamond growth is in 2017, a lot of many size, but a gem quantity diamond was produced in China using HPHD technology. The stone could be after fasting could be one point, two points, and maybe up to five points, but a huge amount were produced starting from 2017, getting into the industry. And due to the mixture of the many with the natural stones it created quite a lot of concerns in our industry. Meanwhile, after that, China started growing using, using the HPA technology to grow a lot, large crystal of diamond. So now if you go to the gym show, you can see a lot of a large HPHT lab grown diamonds, half carat, one carat, two carat, or three carats, huge amount in the trade. 
So with all of this, it's really changed the supply of a gem diamond in our industry. I would like to show these slides. This is a, <laughs> just a, a couple, a few weeks ago. We tested the two diamond in New York lab. They are type two, type two B, the boron doped single crystal diamond. One is a 109 carat, another one is a 115 carat. This is the largest HPHT lab grown type 2B diamond in the world and it's got an adjacent world record. So I just want to show you that technology still keep improving with a highly expectable more and more and better and better quality lab grown diamond will be introduced to our trade. I want to use the two slides to summary what do we really have of lab grown diamonds in the trade right now. This, this slide basically summarizes the HPH lab grown diamond so left hand side basically show you what the as grown color that could be produced using HPHT technology. As you can see here, it could be yellow, orange, blue, colorless, and sometimes the green colors. And this diamond could be treated after growth, what you call a post growth treatment, then it would be able to produce pink color. As we know, pink diamond, natural pink diamond amount is quite limited. So by post-growth treatment of HPHT synthetic, we can create a pink color and we can create a lot of pink color and maybe a limited amount. For CVD diamond, again, same thing left-hand side is as grown color and the right-hand side is a post-growth treatment. CVD diamond color is, uh, as grown is much less uh, options compared with the HPHT never grown. And the color was not so good. It was, could be slightly yellow and a brown color is a very common in CVD as grown diamond. But post growth treatment is going to change a lot of CVD diamond colors. So it turns them into colorless, could turn them into blue, green, and of course they can turn a lot of them into pink and orange colors. I'd like to show you this diamond. I really like this diamond. It's a three carat vivid pink. It is a HPH lab grown diamond. Of course, it's a treated to create this very bright, pure pink, or I would say close to red, that type of a color. And it gives me the kind of a, the image impression. It's not only really a diamond, it gives me the impression of a ruby, that type of impression. And for this type of a color, it will be extremely rare or even exists in natural diamond. So lab grown diamond create a lot of a high quality diamond, but not necessarily high value in the market. It is very important for the industry how to report it, report it correctly, so the market can make the right judgment of its value. With this review of the history of a diamond growth, the lab grown diamond history over the last 70 years. It started from 19, early 1950s and about for over 70 years, 70 years. Now it's much easier for us to understand how the industry should grade, should report with lab grown diamonds. Again, in 1970s, GE first <laughs> produced the experimental German quality diamond in 1970. In 1971, GI issued the report. It's only one year after their success in growing gem quality diamond in 1971. In that time, let's see what GI said in that time. GI used the term synthetic. And it's a lot of uh, discussions. You know, we'll talk about that later. They use a synthetic diamond. And that time we give the use of natural diamond grading terms like a VS1 clarity, GI color. And also could even include a picture in that time. This is as early as 1971. Now, after a very long time, is a 2008 GI redesigned the report for, again, we still call it a synthetic diamond report. You see this a yellow color background to show this is a different from natural diamond report. If we look at the terms, what we use to grade these lab grown diamonds, we use lab grown, this term, and also we use a synthetic diamond grading report here. So you see synthetic lab grown, and in the inscription 
in the in the in the comment we say man-made. So with a mixture of different terms to describe this product, and also in terms of quantity, we don't give a specific letter color, what we call a colorless. And for clarity, we give a range, very slightly encoded. Of course, stone is inscribed, blaze inscribed, with a lab tree grown on the girdle. So that's 2008, after our first issuing of the report in 1971. Well, this continues until 2014. The report style is changed, was changed, and much getting closer or comparable to the report we're using for natural diamond report. But in that time, you know, if we look at terms, we're still using, say, it's a synthetic diamond report and is a lab grown, identified as a lab grown, and also with a man made as a comment. The mixture of the terms, again, with a change of style of the report, but the terminology for color and clarity still a descriptive and also give a range. It's not a specific. It's different from the terms used for natural diamond grading. In 2019, it's just last year, the report style was changed and it was more information included like here. But if we look at the details here, it is still a mixture of a terminology Lab to, oh, I'm sorry, so we will not use the synthetic anymore. The terms change to lab grown. We will not call it lab uh, synthetic dime. The term is just lab grown. But for the color and the clarity, it is still descriptive and a range with colorless or variety included, for example, in this report. Now, what we're going to do to change right now, very recently, GIM uh, announced. We're going to use, <coughs> I'm going to talk more details for lab grown diamonds. We will issue four brand new type of reports, two designed for colorless, near colorless diamond, and two designed for fancy color diamond, lab grown diamonds. It's a brand new, entirely <coughs> new design of the report. Let me give you some details of what we're going to do here. First, this is a digital format only. It is a digital report and with no hard copy, no paper report. The digital report can be easily downloaded from website and it's a PDF file format and it can be easily shared with other people. And Chia will use the four C's as a natural diamond, the terms for assessment quantity of the navigrown diamonds. So we'll use a letter specifications for color and for clarity. And it will also in the website, it will have a landing page and it's kind of educational information for the client to understand better of Labagrun diamonds. So it is a very big change for our grading policy. So if you look at the, what do we say in the report right now? We'll use the specific letter to describe color, for example, for the stone we say E color. And for clarity, we say VS. So it is basically using the same terms that we use for natural diamond grading. So with that, basically, I reviewed the history of diamond growth in Nabatry, the 70 year process of a development, and also GI's uh, evolution of our policy in grading these lab grown diamonds. In the earlier days, we call synthetic diamond, now we call lab grown diamonds, the evolution of the policy of our, of our grading policy. So I want to use uh, GI as a president and CEO, so Susan Jacks' words to conclude the talk. But as she said, I don't think it's a change of mind. It is an evolution. It is an evolution process for the product and evolution process for how we grade this lab grown diamond. With that, basically I covered two topics today. One is a diamond verification, a new supporting service or service GI is going to supply, offer to the industry, how to verify a diamond to make sure the max report, but there is a change of a policy in navigrown diamond uh, in grading. With that, I want to thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wang, for uh, great information and about the update on uh, GIA's uh, laboratory services. Uh, 
we received some uh, questions. Um, let me let me see <laughs> which one should we should we go with the first part first about the uh, verification um, about the uh, laser inscription. This is uh, from uh, um, Diamond Company uh, in Korea. Uh, the question is: uh, Is it possible just to get the photo of the inscriptions on the old diamond? They're already uh, graded. Um, depends on how old. And we have a lot of images saved already for many diamonds uh, graded early days. But I will not guarantee you if a diamond is graded 10 years ago, we have the image. But we have a lot of old images. Um, we will collect, start collecting images for all stones far before, at least a couple of months before GI formally launched the service. Oh, so all the images. So what about the size uh, restrictions on the diamond size restrictions? Technically, there's no size restrictions. Any diamond, once inscribed, there will be image saved, and we will be able to share that image with our client, or share even with the, with the, with the public, depends on the policy then. And any diamond, almost any diamond, let's say 15 point diamond or 100 carat diamond, they all can be inscribed. So size basically is not a problem. The cut, the shape is not a problem either. Okay, can, couldn't hear you the last part, sorry. Can you, can you hear the answer? Can you hear Dr. Wang's answer? I don't hear the, uh, I don't hear his uh, reply. Can you hear me, Dr. Wang? Oh, so how you wanted me to repeat my yes, answer? Yes, yes, please. It was, somehow it was Okay, muted. So, yes. so regarding the sizes, I don't think there are any size restrictions because a diamond, a very small diamond, like a 10, 15 point, we can inscribe it very easily. And if a diamond up to 100 carat, there's no problem to inscribe them either. So what I'm saying is there's no size concern for laser inscription technology. So as you, uh, as you said, the diamonds were graded uh, recently, so the companies can get the photo of the inscriptions. So, and then, okay, here's the question. Uh, probably, what about the service charge? Is there going to be extra charge for that? I, I don't know, actually. And it's, if, it's, if it's up to me, I will make it free. I assume, I, don't take me uh, like uh, this language officially, I think the image could be shared for free. So let's say you have a diamond graded or whoever has a diamond with a report. I think it's technically possible to go to the chair website to do report check and the image will be shared. I assume, but it's not official language of GIA, I assume the image could be shared for free. There'll be no charge for it. But let's wait for the official language, what the GI is going to do. Yes, so we have to wait till the next year when the service starts. Okay. Early, early. I, I think it will be February next year. Yes. For the start of the service. Thank you for that. Uh, and then, oh, one more question is about the uh, uh, laser inscription part, the verification. The, the inscription uh, viewer, and the, the, measure, the, the size that you gave is the uh, size of the uh, video, the viewer, the monitor, mm -hmm. not the whole machine size. No, it's a whole machine size. Oh, about so a 20 centimeters, the biggest dimension is about a 20 centimeters. Okay, then what's the uh, size of the monitor? I don't know exactly. I would say that's probably uh, seven, eight centimeters. Maybe 10 centimeters. Oh, I see. So then what kind of a magnification does it have? Uh, I don't know exact number, 
but it's a very high mag magnification. I would assume it is uh, about 60 to 100 times mag magnification because the license equipment is very small. But you can see that in the, in the screen about 10 centimeters, you can see a very large image. So I would assume it's a probably close to 100 times magnification. Very high magnification, very nice. Uh, one more question about the, uh, you mentioned about the automatic, automated matching that will be launched yeah. next year. Could you explain a little bit more detail about that? Okay, so let me give you an idea how to do that. Let's say you have a diamond. The diamond has a GLS inscription on it, right? So you have a device, take a picture of that inscription. So now we know the report number of the diamond, right? Because that inscription is a report number. Once that information is available in these apps, you load this image to the apps. The apps will be able to read this report number. And then once the report number is available, it can go to GI database to download the GI image with the same report number. So now in the apps, there's two images and a computer can do you know, the artificial intelligence, they can do uh, an automatic calculation to see these two images are identical or not. And there are a lot of development in the back we are doing, but there are a lot of features we can use to compare these two images automatically to see if they match. If they match well, you know, we don't see this, right? We just press a button, but, it, but, the, but the computer is doing all of the calculations and then tell you, yes, that's the same diamond, that will be very, very reliable conclusion or say, no, they are not the same time. So we don't see it, but I assume that it will be a very, very quick process. As soon as you load an image of a diamond, then everything else is a computer will take care of it automatically and give you a conclusion. Okay, so it's uh, available, uh, it's, the service is available for everybody, even to, to the um, trade and to the consumers? I don't know exactly. I'm talking about my presentation basically is from technical viewpoint. How GI is going to implement for business as a business viewpoint? I don't know. There's probably some legal requirement if I know how, who we can share. And that's not, I cannot comment much, but I can from technical viewpoint, it can let everybody do it. Um, but I think uh, Next year, I think GI will set up the business model and uh, how to do it. What I'm saying in terms of fee, because Chris asked for the fee, what I'm saying is probably fine for GI to share the image for free for visual matching, mm -hmm. but for automatic matching, if there's a very simple, very small fee or not, I don't know, but it's a two service visual match and automatic match could be slightly different. Again, I'm not the person to make comment about the business decisions and the GI is going to make it. Okay, great. Anyway, thank you. So next question, a few questions about the uh, laboratory grown diamonds. Uh, one question uh, is, uh, uh, does the, uh, the grading time for the uh, uh, laboratory grown diamond is longer, longer than the natural, grading natural diamonds? No, 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 it shouldn't. But for the I same was, quality, same It size. should be the same, a few days. Should be the same, few days. Yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah. Same. Anyway, then uh, uh, another, another question is, uh, they want to know the logic behind the pricing of the uh, grading fee the, compared to the natural ones because the price of the diamonds are a lot lower than the natural. Yeah, I understand that a concern. And my understanding is the fee structure is the same as for natural diamond grading. So my understanding is that we do exactly the same work for the natural grown diamond as with a natural diamond. So with same service, same fee. And also we I think another big point is uh GI cannot discriminate natural diamond from synthetic from natural grown diamonds. So both are diamonds and we cannot discriminate. So we should apply the same fee. I think that's a little a point to, to see this, uh, this fee structure. I think this question came with uh, the, the reason is asking, he's asking because it's a digital only. 
No paper is involved. Well, the paper itself doesn't cost almost anything. The paper is probably one dollar, maybe less. I don't know, but that shouldn't be a, a, a big deal. But to, to, to generate a digital report, we need a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know, computer IT infra infrastructure in the back to support this. And I think the good thing is that for every, never worry about the report, get a loss. You can download the, your PDF file anytime. Mm -hmm. um, okay, another question is about the volume of uh, grading of uh, uh, lab-grown diamonds uh, at GIA. Is it really increasing compared to like year before? Like a year to year, if you do the comparison year to year, what kind of percentages? Well, it's very hard for me to comment on that. I, what I can tell you is uh, the total number, total percentage of lab-grown diamonds in GIA lab for the service is a very small. And vast majority of service is focused on natural diamond. With this new service, again, it is launched two days ago. Uh, I. I'm very curious to see how it goes, how intake and the, the, the market reacts to this new service, as many people are curious too. So I, I, I'm, I'm wait, waiting and see how the intake is going to, 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 to go in, in GL lab trees. Mm. Okay. Uh, this one, this question is not really uh, the, um, the topic that, uh, subject that you handled, but uh, uh, he'd like to know. Uh, okay. It's about uh, light box, uh, lab grown diamonds by uh, the beers. Yeah. Are they all produced uh, in uh, in the UK? Well, I'm not sure, um, but I can guess um, from the knowledge I have. I think, uh, if not all, but a good amount of the current light box diamonds, at least a good amount of them are produced in UK. Mm. They have a factory set up in United States. Yes. Uh, in Portland. Uh -huh. I, I think they are just about to virtually open the lab, the factory in Oregon. So then I will expect a, a lot of a CVD diamond will be produced in the United States by the DeBeers company. By DeBeers, but, right. So uh, yeah, that was the, that was the, this company is asking you, uh, what do you expect from that the production? So uh, even though it's uh, during the COVID uh, time, so they're already re almost ready to uh, produce. Lab they are diamonds. ready. I think they are very close to virtually open, officially open the facility because I was told they will invite me to attend their virtual open ceremony. Okay, great. Good to know. Uh, and then are they planning to do all kinds of colors? Well, I would say yes. We test quite a lot of stones from uh, Lightbox. They have, you know, colorless, blue, pink, the uh, standard uh, product colors. Uh, some of them, uh, uh, obviously, is treated to introduce the, uh, the fancy colors. Okay. All right. Great. One more question. This, this is, again, it's not really uh, you didn't you didn't uh, cover. Uh, but this is about the uh, artificial intelligence grading on clarity that GIA is going to uh, 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 do it soon because it was announced a few months or a few weeks ago. So the yeah. audience is uh, curious to know when GIA is planning to uh, start the service. Well, and it's still in the development phase. And... Um, I think uh, outside would not be able to tell when GIA actually implement that technology and uh, to what degree that technology will be uh, implemented. I think the transition will be a smooth process. Um, artificial intelligence is AI technology has been progressing very rapidly. This year has showed a lot of potentials, you know, probably pretty soon we would be able to have a autonomous car driving and we don't need a driver anymore. So that's not a, a, a dream. 
Samsung and this technology is going to impact uh, our uh, jewelry industry for mm -hmm. diamond grading, and it's going to Im Im improve a lot of our efficiency and more importantly, to increase our accuracy and the consistency. It is not an easy thing because uh, diamond grading overall is a is an art. Mm -hmm. It is not a science, but we are converting an art to a science. So there's a lot of challenges. But I think we are doing pretty pretty good. As as you know, in the early days, uh, the diamond the color is graded by uh, graders by gemologists. But now we are very successfully to use instruments to grade the diamond the color. The same thing for, for clarity. It could be more challenged than color, but eventually I'm optim optimistic and we will be able to use more and more artificial intelligence to help our diamond grading service. I think it's a very good thing for the trade because eventually it will be better result, maybe even with a, a better cost, a better, uh, better price. Wow, great. So I think uh, uh, this topic uh, artificial intelligence grading uh, will be your next year's topic for this simple <laughs> for this conference. <laughs> I hope so. If you guys can still invite me to attend, I, I hope so. Of course, you are always invited. Anyway, just to let you know, 210 uh, participants uh, uh, pr uh, participated uh, in Korea, and about 50 audiences uh, joined for, for your talk. In, uh, wow. from other countries. So there's a quite a lot of uh, you know, participants for your talk. Thank you so much. And thank you again we, for staying up so late and to give us a great information on, about GIAs. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Songhai. And I also want to thank Dr. Lee for helping me a lot in getting myself prepared and ready for this uh, presentation. Thank you all for attending this, uh, this talk. Thank you.